now um, introduce Ward, who is one of, I believe, the creator of the wiki. Uh, he's been doing amazing things on the internet for just about as long as anyone. And he's going to come and just give us some thoughts. So here's Ward Cunningham. Well, thank you very much. It's great to be here. Great venue. Great to be back in Portland after uh, six hours in the uh, delayed in Chicago. But um, let's see. So I want to talk about uh, a project that's been going on for approaching four years, uh, kind of growing at the rate that it wants to grow. It's taken a nice uh, kind of hockey stick turn. Of course, when you're kind of almost invisible, it doesn't have to be too dramatic to be a hockey stick. Uh, in you know, starting in kind of uh, last fall and in, in the spring, but I wanted to g give a little bit of a, a kind of a sketch of uh, how it came to this. And, and of course, I did make the first wiki in 1995. I had a community; it was an activist community. We set out as a goal to uh, reinvent the literature of computer programming. So this, I think we have a bunch of reinventors here. Uh, our thesis was that uh, ordinary things were as important as the extraordinary things that a mathematician might prove. But just you know how you feel about your program as you're programming, things like that, and and uh, developed uh, this this software patterns community in tried to write in that style. Uh, I think of it as kind of a modularization of experience. And gosh, I, I was at uh, uh, the uh, University of Illinois in 1994, and we're talking about how all this is going to work. And the graduate students there who helped us put on an event said, well, Ward, this should all be in hypertext. And I said, yeah, that makes sense. And he says, well, have you seen the web? And I said, well, I've heard about it. <laughs> And they said, well, here's what HTML is. It's pretty easy to, you know, it's a pamphlet about that thick and said, easy to learn, and you should put up a site for us. And I didn't think to ask why I should do it. <laughs> you know, they were the center of the internet. But I, uh, I got on the internet and uh, did some hand HTML, and I thought, well, that was terrible. So I took this new thing I'd learned called Perl, and I wrote a Perl script, and that was the first wiki. And, and, and it really helped that there was this community that already exists, a community that was committed to doing something new, and there was kind of a model for how we were going to write. And, and it ran that for about uh, five years before the encyclopedia people came along and said, gosh, this looks pretty interesting. I'd wonder if it would work for an encyclopedia, which is a completely different style of writing. And at the time, I thought, well, you know, here I'm inventing a new way to write and they're just doing an encyclopedia. <laughs> but, you know, they did, uh, they did make something of the word and thankfully they kept the same word, wiki. Now, I did have a chance to uh, speak at the first Wikimania conference and I, I showed this graph. The, uh, the, the gold line is Wikipedia, which was exponential growth at the time. This is 2005 now. And I showed 1995, and, and what it, what it, I was still had the growth, but in terms of the original ownership in that, it really felt like it had kind of plateaued. So I said, you know, nothing grows, in, in, you know, exponentially forever. So, you know, I predicted that Wikipedia was going to plateau, and uh, then uh, five years later, they published this picture in their. Uh, uh, you know, in their strategic plan, and they said, this is the big... Now, look at how similar those pictures look. Isn't that, uh, you know, and, and of course, this is easy to predict. You say, you take something that's exponential, and you predict that it's going to plateau, right? So, here it is, 2015, and what I want to do is I want to say that I, I revisited Wiki, you know, with a, a 20-year better technology. And uh, that, that's been a bit of an effort for me because I had to learn the new technology, and uh, it's, uh, there's a lot of it. But now I don't have quite as good a story because I'm not trying to change the uh, literature of computer programming. I think that's changed itself pretty well. 
In fact, I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen, but then I'm a technologist and, and I'm putting together pieces. And I think the pieces go together very interestingly. And uh, I'm hoping that, uh, that by talking about this that you'll say, oh, I know what it's for. Uh, we do have some hints and, and I will we'll get into that. But this is the abstract I wrote for this. I said, uh, just the first wiki change the way people write. You know, I'm you know, not modest. Uh, the new wiki will change the way people work. And that is, I wanted to be able to, instead of writing about work in a wiki, I wanted to be able to do work in a wiki, where everything you would need, that, that, that the documentation would be kind of a spin-off of just leaving your work behind. Uh, the, the, uh, I go on to talk about uh, two fundamental ideas, and of course there's a lot of fundamental ideas in this, but I picked two because I thought it would be interesting here. One was uh, refactoring, uh, and, and that's a term that we used a lot in computer programming. You know, you write a program and when you're finally done you realize what you should have written, and then you just go back and say, well, let me just make it look like I knew all along. And the, uh, the other is federation, and that's uh, something that uh, I'm not the first to do. Email is federated, right? Because you, everybody has an email server and they all talk to each other, except for that two-thirds of the internet that's on Gmail. But uh, there's, there's also this idea, and this is what I, th when I think about federation, I'm thinking about, you know, the distributed evolution of knowledge. And, and this is, this is a, uh, uh, a, a uh, what do you call this, inheritance diagram. This is the, uh, uh, the Murdoch uh, family. William Murdoch down here at the bottom, it says the uh, uh, first officer on the Titanic uh, lost at sea, April 1912. Uh, all this blue in here, this is uh, all the different sea captains you know, uh, in this, this family. And something, I mean, I started out with shoemakers and uh, uh, masons up there at the very top, but seafaring was very important in this era. And the seafaring uh, know-how moved through this in some sort of evolutionary fashion, uh, being passed on father to son. I noticed that the the women on this diagram are mentioned almost in passing, uh, which, you know, needs to change. But uh, uh, the, uh, the, this, is, this is where I start thinking. I say, well, I want a process that's evolutionary. I want, th I want this stuff to last. You know, part of this comes from, I say, I made this wiki 20 years ago, and where's it going to be 20 years from now? You know, especially when, when things happen over hundreds of years, how do we make things I mean, I know this is hard to imagine if we just want to keep a file around for a year is, is a challenge, but, but to make things last. So um, this is the big switch. This is a thing, when I, when I show people what I'm doing, they say, well, Ward, that's great, but why do you call it wiki? And my flip answer is I say, well, because I can. <laughs> but. Uh, it's really a challenge to me. I'm taking something that is sort of completely different, turned upside down, and I, I'm saying, I believe with the modern technology, I can make this upside down thing feel like Wiki. And I think Wiki does have a feel. Uh, and uh, making that work. So here's a traditional Wiki. The, the idea is you have a database and, and you let a bunch of people through a web server uh, edit that database. That's the uh, the document that anyone can edit. And uh, that worked amazingly well. I thought, five months, if this lasts five months, it's going to be great. Worked great for five years, then the encyclopedia people, and they've kept their going for 10 or 15, but it's really a struggle. You know, uh, that's because as you become famous, there's a lot of incentive for people who are doing nothing in particular to come in and, and grab a little of that attention. That's called wiki spam. So, so uh, this is what I did. I just said, well, uh, in a federated wiki, if you want to write some spam, you've got to get your own disk, and you've got to write your own spam on your own disk, and then you've got to hope people read it. And all the sharing happens in the browser. You know, this is the modern browser. It's got a lot of compute power. And so we just 
program the browser to browse a bunch of wikis as if they're all one. Now, if you find a wiki full of spam, you just take it off the list. <laughs> I'm not looking at that one anymore. And, and this seems a lot like, uh, you know, a news feed or something like that, uh, aggregator. In, in a sense, it is. A lot of that's, you know, federated or made to seem like it's federated, even if it's Facebook. But this is also a place where you make things of permanence. It's not a feed that's there to get you to come back and see what's new. It's a, it's a place where you make stuff, and you make stuff that lasts. Remember, it's this lasting is important. Now, uh, let, me, let me on this one diagram kind of address those two things I was just talking about, refactoring. So, so in this browser software, you can be looking at a couple of sites and say, these two people are talking about the same thing and they don't even know it, and so I'll just grab the best parts of both of their sites and write it on my own site. And, and I'll write it by moving things around so that it looks like it was, you know, like we knew what it should be all along, right? That's, that's this idea that when you finally know what it should say, you just make it say what it should say. And, and, and because I have to bring my own disk, I write it on my own disk. But then, the federation part comes in, somebody else is looking at my site, and they say, this is pretty good stuff, but it hasn't forgotten its roots. It remembers edit every editing operation that I did, every move, every change, every insert, delete, and links back to those original sites. So this is the Creative Commons attribution share alike, you know, manifest in, uh, in code as law on the internet. So, so this, is, this is the refactoring. I grab a bunch of stuff and I make it be the way I think it should be. And then the federating is when I share that around, uh, all of the stuff goes with it. Of course, that depends upon these other people keeping their servers going. But there's enough copying, you know, that if this gets around and touches 100 or 1,000 servers, you know, 10% of them can go out and it'll still carry on. This is, this, you know, just think about this, uh, you know, you know this, this, this inheritance hierarchy. You know, the old guys die, but, you know, the, the craft of sailing ships is, uh, is preserved. Now, I do want to mention, you know, because I know I'm talking to people who care about these things. You know, refactoring is a lot like editing. But usually, editing is associated with, I'm doing a work, I know who my audience is, and I just need to go make sure that I'm doing it well, going back and making smaller and smaller changes. Refactoring is, is, is like editing, except that it's more uh, dramatic. It's like, this is a hunk of junk, let me pull this into this, and, and moving lots more around. There's a lot more change, and so it's not editing that, Microsoft Word is going to handle by keeping little notes in the margin. It's, it's, it's more, um, that's why I like to have another word, but if you want to call it editing, uh, it probably is. Another is this idea that I license my stuff to be used any way the user cares to use it. And, uh, you know, we were talking about uh, science and the the challenge to have uh, publications and so forth, and I'm running against the grain on this in the sense that I'm encouraging what some people would call plagiarism, and I'm just thinking that it is a model for the future. It might not have been a model for the past, you know, when certainly wasn't true when you had to carve things in stone tablets or, or on uh, uh, sheepskin or whatever they did, but, you know, since the printing press, it's been pretty wild what you can do with ideas but it's even more wild now, and I think it's time to, to kind of get over some of this ownership thing. And uh, I have some ideas there, but I think it's something we're gonna all learn together. So anyway, this is the model. We're gonna inherit stuff through generations and generations of people reading, refactoring, federating content, and we're gonna have this environment where an evolutionary process happens. And that's uh, what we're going to call the Federated Wiki. Now, 
I did mention that this is all done in JavaScript on the browser. What I want to do is show you what it looks like. And I didn't call it a refactorer, I call it an editor because people know what that is. And this is what it looks like. And uh, it's a single page application. Uh, you go to a site, you download a big wad of JavaScript, and it turns your browser from a web browser into a federation browser. It's really just a, another kind of browser. And the thing I do is instead of having tabs across the top, I just show you pages side by side. And I make the pages kind of the width of a cell phone that is actually a pretty nice size for reading, a single column. And, and I put a, a number of them up side by side. And, and if I had 10 of them, I can slide them back and forth just like a video game. Uh, and, and, and I want to just kind of, because I use these words when I talk about it, on any one of these pages, and I, and I call these wiki pages inside of a web page. So a wiki page has a story, and a story is a, a list of items. I call them items. Uh, they tend to be paragraphs. They're units uh, that uh, you could move around, rearrange. I tend to write in rather short paragraphs because it makes it easier to move them. Uh, and um, they could be images. They could be data sets. They could be visualizations. Uh, then I tack on the bottom of every one, I, I tack on this thing I call the journal. That's the, what you usually think of the uh, undo, redo stack that your editor has. Instead of just keeping it in a stack and letting you see one, I say, well, here's everything. Everything that's been done to this document. And because the documents are small, it doesn't really get to be that gigantic. And as it's passed around from site to site, that process is noted in this journal too. So you get this complete history, not only of who edited what when, but where they edited it. So that's the journal, and these things are called actions. Uh, so we have a story full of items and a journal full of actions. We put a title on the top of that, and that pretty much makes the page. There's a few more things going on here because of all this copying going on, all this forking, we call it. Uh, there could be many versions of this page. In fact, probably more than I can even know of, but the ones that I happen to be looking at the moment, we call them twins, that's a page that is like this in name, maybe in name only. It turns out I make a lot of different sites, and I usually put a page in there called Ward Cunningham that defends why I'm writing this site. And every one of these is different, but you can see uh, a number of different copies of the Ward Cunningham page. Also, on every page I have, an, and I don't know if you can see this as well, it doesn't look that bright from here, but I have reddish uh, square icons. Uh, I call them flags. Uh, and, and this is a gold one. It's not quite the same. This, this page is actually colored with a, with a band around it that says, oh, by the way, this didn't come from this site. We reached out to some other server for that site. And uh, so you're always reminded that this comes from somewhere else uh, by, by noticing uh, the color of the flag. Uh, the, way, the place you started if you started on your own site, any editing you do is going to go back to that. And that's up there in the tab where it says origin. That's, that's where the JavaScript came from. And, and in the web world, that site is special. Uh, but it says, by the way, the, the page is New Relic is the last one, but the origin is, is kind of on the left there. And um, here, here I'm keeping track of it. And this is, this is really kind of dark here. One, two, three, four different sites have been visited just within this tab, just browsing. And if I browse some more, it'll be five, six, eight, ten. Those are the neighbors, places I get to by just browsing around saying, oh, this page was copied from this other site. Let's throw that in the neighborhood. The neighborhood grows as I'm browsing some corner of the Federation. And every tab in my browser will have a different neighborhood. In fact, I can drag pages back and forth between tabs to join neighborhoods. I have my you know, skiing buddies and my coding buddies, and there are some skiers who code, and so 
you know, there are places I might want to bring it together. And finally, down here in the bottom, that says uh, 269 pages. Uh, that's how big this neighborhood is. And in fact, as I browse, it'll be 300, 500, 1,000, 2,000 pages. And that's because every time it notices a new neighbor, it just goes to that site and says, tell me about all your pages. Give me a site map with searchable text. And so it's just building up the site map. So whenever I search, I'm searching my neighborhood. So let's, let's see what this looks like in person. I actually make a new site for every talk I give. So this one is called write.asia.wiki.org. And I, I used to work on servers in my basement. And I had a class of bug that's associated with long turnaround delays. So I decided from now on I'm going to do all my work in Singapore with a 300 to 500 millisecond uh, turnaround. And uh, that's just because I want to feel the pain that everybody feels around the world. And uh, uh, so, so I do most of my work in Asia. Now, write.asia.wiki.org. And if we click this, and if we are lucky, this will take us. So let's see, make that a little bigger. How's that look? Can, can people read that in back? Yep, sweet. Uh, every, every site has one distinguished page, and it's called Welcome, Welcome Visitors. And uh, because it's the same everywhere, you don't want to write a lot on it, but we say, write a page about yourself. Here's my page. It says, gee, I'm doing this write, uh, write the docs talk. And then I say, oh, and, and here is the, the write the docs talk. And it has two sections, one on refactoring and one on federation. And if we dive in here to refactoring, uh, here I'm going to show you how the editor works. And I have some notes here. Let's make this a little bigger still. And I say, well, you, you drag the move. So if I drag this around, I wasn't getting the, you know. So uh, I can drop that wherever I want. I can even move it onto other pages. Uh, let me go ahead and move it. I'll move it over here. Drag to move is over there. It said it was added here and it was removed here. But uh, we'll just put it back, put it someplace else. It says double click to edit. This is, you know, friend of mine early in the project says wrote this little editor in, a, in, in an hour figuring it would last a week and you know we're still using it but it turns out that we do have this notion of a markup there's a markup behind every one of these pages and uh, when you double click you can edit it if you double click here and double click someplace else you know it just moves the editor around uh, if you hit clover I or alt I on some computers it'll bring up a page that tells you about that markup. Remember, each one of these items could have a different markup. So here is my summary of the markup. And it turns out I use the double square brackets and single square brackets. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the documentation on the markup that we use in and out. There's not much else. There's, there's no fancy things for page layout because we don't do page layout. You know, the, the, the viewer does the page layout. Here, here it says, save an empty paragraph to delete. So if I just delete all that text and save it, poof, it's gone. Shows up there as deleted. Uh, I can actually call it back. I can say, what did it look like before I deleted it? And there it says, oh, look, this is 9.34 this morning. It was still there. I can even uh, say, well, uh, I want that one back. So, so there I, 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 I recalled from history the version even with that delete and, and the fact that I recalled it was here. The, the, there's two editing buttons. Plus says I want a new item and it's not one that's already there. Uh, and, and the flag says I want to copy something. I want to claim it as my own. It's the flag. I'm staking a claim. Uh, fork is like, like copy. 
except there's this implicit change of ownership. If I take your page and copy it, I'm not just copying it, I'm claiming it as my own, and I say, I can make it better. I'm going to own it and represent it as my own, which means that I have some responsibility to bring my understanding to that page, and when you read it from my site, you know it came from me. So, uh, th so that's the plus and the flag. Uh, when, I, when I click plus, I get this... This is like a, a, a paragraph, a, a story item that hasn't figured out what it wants to do when it grows up. I think of it as kind of a pluripotent stem cell. But it says, well, gosh, what would you like to be? Maybe you'd like to be Markdown. So if I say Markdown, I can type some Markdown here with a title. And when I save it, you know. So I do, I, I step out of my super simple wiki syntax with just square brackets. And I step into Markdown if I want Markdown kind of things. So I can say HTML. I can say D3 graphics visualization if I want. I can say LaTeX when I need that. And, and all these, here in this little thing on factory, oh, that's Apple telling me that I haven't done, oh, and it wants to tell me twice, okay. Uh, here I just quoted out, by the way, this is all up on the web, so you don't need to take notes, just go up here and look around. I, I just mentioned all these different about pages. The, for every plugin, there's a page named about plugin plugin. Uh, so, so here's that, here's the thing that explains the factory and all the different things. It's also a drop zone. You can drop things on it, like images, and it makes an image thing. Or you can drop a CSV file and it makes a data set you can drop another wiki page on it. So that's pretty neat. Paragraph we just looked at, Markdown we just looked at. Here I modeled this after GitHub's, you know. I say, you know, who knows what Markdown is? So I just picked what seemed to make sense out of GitHub. And they had this cool thing called task lists. And task lists are interesting because if I click on one of these, that is an editor. And I don't know if you noticed, but it just popped up there. It says, this was edited uh, 200 uh, milliseconds ago. Right, so, so the fact that I'm in an environment where I have an interactive document that I can write on, in fact, I could click that on your document and it would say, oh, he wants to, you know, I want to hit a check mark on your document. It says, fine, you can do that, but it's going to go back to my server. Right, so this is, uh, this is a hint of doing work in the browser, simplest kind of work. Images um, have a, a title. Uh, Math Jacks, I think everybody does this, but it's kind of nice, looks nice, nice to not have to do it. Here, here, is, here is a calculation that I did at the end of a ski trip in 1981 with a bunch of engineers. And I said, give me your receipts, I'll work out the uh, who, who owes who what. And then when I saw the size of the stack of the receipts, I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I had a computer, so I just type, started typing in receipts. And then I moved the lines around until it kind of looked like it was a, an expense report. And, and then I just said, well, now if it just added itself up. So I wrote an awk script that just read the report and wrote a version with the sums in it. And, and in fact, if I click this, here, here's what it looks like. This will. Uh, what I did is I just. Cal Diller w was on the trip and he paid for these dinners, and then I drew a line and I said, "That's Cal." And Bill, you know, and there's Bill, and then there's w oh, Ward, uh, but that was just gas. I did Ward, and then I did some other meals and shared expenses and divide by three. Oh, and then individual offsets because there were some phone calls and we weren't going to pay for Bill's phone calls and whatever. And then I come around here and do some other sums and then double check and make sure I count for how much error there would be. And, and, and there it is. So just when I'm starting this thing, a few years ago, I said, well, I remember doing that in 1981. I wrote about it in 2001, maybe. I said, let me go revisit that, and instead of doing it in an awk, I did it in JavaScript, and, 
and there it is. There's a calculator. This is just another kind of markup. This is the Ward Cunningham Ski Expense Report markup, and, and it looks pretty clean, right? You know, here I say, well, capitalized words are special. You know, other than that, it's just just copied through. Oh, and, and then there's this semantic behind it of running totals that get cleared when you hit lines and so forth. So, so that's interesting. Here's my new reinvention of it. I just said, okay, well that was great, but let's, let's see if we can do environmental science life cycle analysis spreadsheets in this, because I was, had a sponsor who was, cared about that, and I said, okay, you got this system of three workbooks, each with 30 or 40 spreadsheets in it with, you know, those columns that go out to C, D is the column heading, you know, that it, it, they, were, they were big. So, so I said, well, I'm going to make it super simple. Here, here's the simplest thing. Take two and three, and you say sum, and there it is. This, you could say two foos and three bars, and uh, when we sum that up, we get two twos and three bars, and the sum is this. We could sum, say the sum is called foo bar, and so there we get five foo bars. And, and this is creating variables in the object space that is offered by JavaScript. And in fact, I can slide down and use those in another calculation on the same page or the next page over or a page from your site, if you have a page that's talking about foo bars and computing with them. Here, here's another thing. You know, I knew if I put this in a grid, people would tell me all the ways it wasn't Excel. And so I don't do any grids, no grids, but I do do units, because I had to one-up Excel. And, and here I say, well, use 12 to convert from inches, to two inches from feet, or three to convert from yards to feet. And then I can write a calculation. Some unit conversion can be applied automatically. So here I say, take 90 inches and nine feet and sum it, giving me the total in yards. And I save that, 5.5 yards. You can check my arithmetic. And this is great because I can put in conversion factors like uh, miles per gallon. You know, converting miles to gallons or gallons to mile, and that depends upon what car you're driving. Or uh, kilograms of CO2 as a measure of energy. And it turns out in this work I was doing, you know, they had kilograms of CO2 and they had megawatts of electrical energy, and just to make it fit into Excel, they converted everything to megajoules. People do their books in megajoules, right? And I said, well, this is crazy, you know, and uh, so I, I thought Unis conversion was going to be my big thing. Uh, I, I also got away with making a calculator that didn't subtract, right? Because I wanted this interoperability. I didn't want to get in this situation where this thing has to be on the left and this thing has to be on the right. So uh, you can add a negative number and you can put that on either side and so forth. So, so when I say simple, I mean I'm going for as simple as possible, but uh, uh, you know, st still looking for some power. I, I will sidetrack here. I just have to show the world's shortest bottles of beer song. And this is, uh, here it is, we start out, we say 99 bottles of beer, minus one down, uh, 98 bottles of beer. And if I look at here, I just say 99 minus one. In fact, here I don't even have to say minus one because it's learned that from the previous line. That's called the take one down and pass it around variable, and it comes out minus one. Here, here, if I hover over that, it says, oh, by the way, that was previously 98, and that's a delta of minus 1.02%. Uh, the other thing is I come down here, I don't need to do it here, I can just pick up the calculation right where I left off after a little bit of explanation, just like in your math textbooks. Uh, I can say, well, let's pick it up where we are. Oh, we've got 97. Oh, look, I can even fuzz those numbers around, too, if I want to, to do a sensitivity analysis. And, and, here's, and, and here I kind of messed it up a little bit. Here's, here's where it, it gets interesting. Here's a table of beer constants. I did this with a spreadsheet. And, and this has one like take a few down and take a bunch down. And this is how we're going to get done in a hurry. You know, 
I just say, well, take those 96 bottles of, oops. Oh, wow, that's going crazy here. Take those, take those bottles, take a few down, take a few more down, take a bunch down, and there we are. 99 bottles of beer done. And, and it turns out there's a lot of this sort of stuff you can do. It seems childish to write something out so explicitly. But when you spread it out over half a dozen pages and say, here's what we're going to do with the CO2. Here's what we're going to do with the sea level. Here's what we're going to do with the toxics in the waste stream. Here's what we're going to do with this. And here's how we're going to roll them all up and come up with some factor that we're going to judge our employees by of how sustainable their work is. Well, the employees can look at it and understand what you did, maybe. They have to dig down into the science to get to what those numbers really mean. But again, it's just like reading Wikipedia, you know, except that there's numbers in it and they sum. So this is, again, me trying to make a wiki where I can do my work in the wiki. And it feels like wiki. It's all done with a bunch of different markups. And uh, that means a bunch of different little explanations. Here's one, we were doing a class on this here uh, just a month ago on teaching machines. And I said, well, I did a teaching machine. Here, here's a plug-in that will teach you Morse code. I did this in 1975, and you know, again in 1980, and again in 1985. It's been rewritten four or five times. I said, let me just write it one more time here. It says, click here to start. Let's see if we can hear it. Oops. Well, I was hoping we'd have audio. What this does is it sends Morse code, and then you just type the letter, and it grades you. This is a bar chart across the top. There's two letters. If I, if I double click this, I can see this is the database. It says Q is spelt this way, and 7 is spelt this way. Oh, and, and let's say we're doing 60% uh, on that one, and 40% on this one, and uh, maybe 45 here because that's so long it's easy to get but this one sounds kind of like a zero so maybe we're doing 25 percent right on that and then you get the bar chart and, and it, it just accumulates that while you play but because all of this I mean this is just a little widget right it's a widget but instead of a widget on a dashboard it's a widget on a wiki and the wiki that is intrinsically shared it's shared in a methodology where you can do your stuff without worrying about me. I can do my stuff without worrying about you. But we're still sharing in this Creative Commons model. If I like your uh, Morse code teaching machine, I can grab it, start working with it myself. So, so that's, that's the editor. Now, let me, let me go back and step back from that a little bit and tell you why I'm doing that. And I should check on the time. Ten minutes. Okay, so I will uh, describe this. I, I, I drew the uh, hierarchy of the McDonald's or whatever they were, the, the sea captains. Here's how I really see it. Here, here's a bunch of global manufacturers that care about sustainability. And they compete in the marketplace, but they don't want to compete on sustainability because if there's only one winner, we all lose anyway. So, so they have a bunch of sites where they talk about how they rate and evaluate material choices from a sustainability point of view, and they're sharing. But the reason they're doing that is they want to influence other people. They want to influence their suppliers. So here I call them the innovative suppliers. And these people are competing too, but they're sharing just enough process stuff, first of all, so that the manufacturers know that they're really doing the work, but that there's kind of a community of suppliers and they, they overlap but, but they're distinct. They talk a different jargon. They talk a jargon of, of uh, material manufacturing instead of material, instead of product manufacturing. On the other side of them are all the NGOs and other advocates who are out there measuring the toxics in the waste stream and so forth and, 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 and getting on the case of the manufacturer's cause you know, there, there's a pull. And every now and then these, these NGOs are on this 24-7. Every now and then the data journalists get involved and they hear the, the noise that the NGO's making, but they go to the sites of the NGOs and then they trace back through the history to the manufacturers and all the way back to the suppliers. 
So all of a sudden the data, data journalists get the whole picture. You know, they get every edit that anybody's done in these data sets, all the calculations, how it all fits together, how this is going to work. And of course, to keep it honest in some sense, uh, it's all founded on science. And most in, in this life cycle analysis, most of the science is done by uh, people taking their sabbatical and going off and measuring things. And, you know, I think they're hoping to sell it to big business and, you know, maybe we're kind of, uh, uh, kind of ruining that business by asking if they give it away. But there, there's also, we call it the interested public, and it turns out most people don't actually care whether their products are sustainable. But there's some people who do, and they're influencers. And so this is, this is a map of what it looks like to be in this world of, uh, of, of sharing. And, and now I want to slip back over here and show you just a couple of things, and I think I'll wind up on maybe not all of them. Uh, this again is it, write the docs, and this is part two on federation. Here I want to say that the traditional workflow of writing is you edit, 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 and publish, and then in wiki change that to publish, edit, 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 <laughs> and then I say the new wiki, it's publish, edit, edit, and relax. And the reason you can relax is because nobody's going to come in and mess around with your stuff. They might copy your stuff, but you know you have this this protection. It's great for smaller, more specialized wikis. Uh, part of it is I had to come up with what I call affordances that make it feel like a wiki. Probably, probably uh, one that's interesting is that uh, uh, a domain is your identity. So if you can't put up a site with a domain name, it's hard to be a real person in this world. Every page has a uh, welcome visitors page in there. You kind of say who you are. Here I'm saying I'm that person because I got invited to this write the docs thing. Oh, here, if I hit the flag, it pulls up. This is, this is from uh, this site called uh, Localhost. It's right here on my laptop. This is where I, I remember Eric. Thank you, Eric, for inviting me and what my abstract was. I try to make my talks match the abstract. Uh, and, and, and again, down here in the corner, this is accumulating. Uh, recent changes, when I say what's changed on this wiki, notice that it uh, shows me both wikis, right? If I, if I go touch a few more things, like I think if I touch this bottle of beer, uh, see I'm picking up two more, see I'm spinning there, it's fetching the, uh, fetching the site maps and we'll have them here in a second. There, see them see popping in? Yeah, I must have found, well, so, so this is, this is the this is like uh, blog aggregating, but it's all happening in my browser under my control. Um, there's a number of other things you can do, like you can make something that's actually like a reference. Here I said, you know, it's not just down here in my journal that I know about this site. Here's a site I just want to consciously refer to, and so I'll uh, do that. This one actually mentions a few other sites. And, and so as I follow these references, it's, uh, it's just building up my neighborhood. So let's see. Uh, I think we, oh, we got five minutes. Well, let me, let me mention, I did mention that we're kind of seeing the beginnings of this hockey stick thing, having built something based on ideas, ideas from biology, ecology, stuff like that, said I want to make a computerized version of that because I think that this evolutionary process is valuable. Uh, one thing that uh, my friend Mike Caulfield, who's a blended learning expert uh, and, and devoted blogger, both political blogger and ed tech blogger, you know, so well, you know, if you really want to be a good blogger, you know, you have to keep a lot of notes, anything you see. So he keeps a journal in a wiki where whenever he reads anything, he writes a page about it. And, and in fact, this is one that I cribbed from his site. Just, just mentioning it, of course, now we got some more spinning going on here. Is it's, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll mention, this is, this is a paper he read. He pulls a few quotes out, offers some opinion, a few more quotes. And then this, somebody else came along, somebody in a, in a community that we were working in, said, oh, this reminds me of these other things. So, so it's it, after the fact LinkedIn uh, convinced me I should do the same thing. 
So uh, I said, well, there's two things I do. I, uh, I read a lot of stuff and I think a lot of thoughts. So I separated mine here. Here's a list of things I've read in November is when I started December, January, February. You know, I've got, got this, uh, oh, this is my latest, when replicators unite or uh, hyperlapse or, yeah, so this is, this is kind of my reading list, but each one of these has, uh, you know, I actually learn a lot more. I mean, I read a lot of stuff and it kind of, you know, I kind of remember that I read it, but I don't remember what it said. And so by just, just cribbing out a few paragraphs, oh, and then, and then I had to comment on Adam Smith. I love to talk about him. Uh, you know, I just add two paragraphs of my own thought that reflects these key paragraphs that I pulled out. It's just really excellent uh, way, way to get along. And, and, and I do the same thing with my recent thoughts, a few other journals. We've had a number of different events based on this. And uh, I think I'll close by mentioning that, uh, if I can go back here far enough, uh, blended learning, uh, we're, we're going to be talking about that at the uh, uh, Open Source Bridge Conference here in another week or month or something. And Mike will come down all the way from Vancouver, Washington, which I know is a difficult <laughs> transit over that bridge. And we'll have, if you thought I kind of rambled, I think he is a much more directed speaker and it'll be great. So I hope. Some of you, maybe most of you, can make it to that. And I thank you for your attention this morning. I will be down in the uh, uh, open space and would love to chat with any of you individually and especially talk about how you might participate in the project. So thank you.